Zach with Wingard Wearables. I look terrible, but I feel good because you are one of 12 special people that's going to watch this video to the end. And today's video is about what is the quill. And at the end of the video, we're going to talk about uh, scalping. I witnessed, well, no, I didn't witness. It, was, it occurred in this house, a scalping incident. And we're going to go over that. So stay tuned to the end. Uh, now, uh, the quill is a deceptively simple looking multi-purpose tool that can also act as a self-defense uh, weapon. Um, these are hand forged from 303 stainless steel into a diamond cross section. Uh, the corners are broken so that you can grip this and strike things with great force or exert force through prying or, or levering or twisting and it doesn't cut the skin. Um, it's actually quite comfortable. So uh, this has a belt sanded finish on the top two facets and then a hand file finish on the inside for more texture in the grip. There is no edge on the quill. It is not an edged weapon. It comes to a pyramidal tip on this long side and a chisel edge on this uh, short side. And those have different utility functions. Um, now, uh, the quill can be gripped in many different ways. Uh, it is not uh, round in cross-section or square in cross-section. It's diamond in cross-section for a reason because the fine uh, muscles in your hand can lock down on those facets, those diamond facets, whether you grip it like this or in hammer grip or in this grip twisted that way for like powerful haymaker type blows uh, or choked up like this for like pressing down on a surface and tearing open, say, the tape on a box, that sort of thing. Um, it's just a counterintuitive but kind of amazing that this shape can be conformed to the hand in so many different ways. Uh, and it can also be worn tucked behind the ear. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to carry the quill. Um, the quill was initially intended for behind the ear carry. Uh, however, majority of uh, customers, the majority of time I carry the quill, uh, which is all the time, it's either behind my ear or it's dropped into the bottom of my coin pocket, like if I'm wearing like a legit, you know, jeans with a coin pocket type thing, or just down dropped in the bottom of my pocket, my main pocket if I'm in sweatpants, that sort of thing. Um, some customers have rigged up simple like tubing with a string and a clamp so that way they can uh, hold the quill against like a tied to a button if they're wearing scrubs, that sort of thing. Um, so there's just so many carry options. Other customers have improvised like leather uh, sheaths that they can clip to their belt. Um, but yeah, the quill does not come with a carry system. Uh, it is not a needle tip sharp tip here. It's blunt tipped. Uh, it can be carried into the pocket uh, just fine. You put your hand, wrap your hand around it and start using it for utility or defensive purposes. Um, now, uh, this is made of 303 stainless steel. Uh, it can eventually rust, but uh, to care for your quill, um, you know, when you're done using it on something grimy or dirty, just wash it off just like you would with, uh, you know, a table flatware, that sort of thing. Um, so it really can, uh, it's going to last a long, long time because it's, it's rust resistant and there's just, there's no grip scales or anything uh, for it to go wrong. Um, this will outlast you, your family's family. When the killer robots take over, the T-1000 is going to use this thing as a toothpick. Um, it's just going to be around forever. Um, so these are hand forged in Landenburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and it has been our most popular item. And they come in three different sizes. So in my hands right now is the original quill. Uh, it's about three-eighths thick at maximum thickness. Um, and then it tapers down in thickness on the short point, the chisel point, and the main point. Um, and when it's gripped in my fist, that main point extends a little over two inches from your fist. Uh, now, to measure what size quill is right for you, we, we have a slim quill, which is thinner in cross-section and tighter in hook gap. And we have a quill XL that's much thicker in cross-section with a wider hook gap, gap. So to know which size quill is right for you, take some measuring tape, take your middle finger and ring finger, this section of your fingers, and wrap and take a measurement of that circumference. And if this distance here is under four inches, get the slim quill. 
because that will, will fit in. My hand can fit into a slim cool, but it's in there pretty tight. Um, if it's between four and five inches for the circumference, get the original size quill. And if you have monster hands, like as in the circumference of your two fingers is approaching five inches and above, then the Quill XL. Really, uh, if you got hands of my size, you can use any of these. It's just you're going to have to, for the Quill XL, drop in a third finger to fill in that hook gap. Um, or you just use it in this hammer fist grip uh, as well. So they come in different sizes. The Quill XL is so big that you're not going to be able to hang it off your ear. Uh, that's you know going to be a pocket carry, or it's so big you can you know tuck it in, trap it in your belt. Um, but yeah, those three sizes. Uh, personally, I've been carrying the uh, Slim Quill more and more. Just off screen, the cat is going to get in the shot. Stay around for the scalping story. It, it deals with cats. If you love cats like me, and you don't like bad cats, you're really going to like this story. Um, but yeah. I personally have been really liking the Slim Quill lately, uh, even though it's a tighter fit in my fingers. It, it hangs behind the ear all day just fine. Same with the original Quill, but the Slim Quill weighs about an ounce. The original Quill weighs about 1.4 ounces. And believe it or not, you can actually feel the difference on your ear. Um, but I've carried both behind the ear, no issues, even with like, um, you know, big hearing protection earmuffs on when, you know, around uh, firing guns or using loud uh, power tools. Um, and it's really been no issue. I've even showered with uh, the quill tucked behind my ear, so you can conceal carry this thing naked. Like if you're in like a public shower area, like uh, you know, like campgrounds, um, those get a little creepy at night. So this is a handy thing to keep behind your ear. Um, but they're handy in general. Uh, like like I said, there's no edge on the quill, but it does come to a point, and because it's made of 303 stainless steel, that's not hardenable steel. Um, it's a very tough steel, though. So if you carry knives, like think this Victorinox uh, Swiss Army Knife Classic, or this, you know, is a collector's like a Bulldog brand slip joint, um, you know, these folding knives are great. They're great at slicing open things and, and have all sorts of purposes. But they're, you know, when it comes to really abusive tasks like, uh, you know, prying or, or using it like an awl or a drill or scraping, uh, the quill really comes in handy as a knife saver. I've even used this as a rudimentary cutting tool. Like if you were working on a work surface that's metal and you don't want to ruin your slicing knife edge, you can take that pyramidal point on the quill, press down, and just use it to tear through materials. And we did find that uh, you can break down boxes faster with the quill than a knife because you're kind of slowed down when you have... Um, a knife blade out, especially if you're cutting towards yourself, breaking down lots of boxes. You don't want that live blade coming towards you in an uncontrolled fashion. So, you know, when we were timing breaking down boxes, uh, the quill wound up being faster because you could choke up like that and use, granted, it took more force to break down the boxes, um, but you could use that a lot faster with more force and more controllability. So we were surprised by some of the use cases with the quill. Uh, far beyond what the design was intended. Uh, customers send us messages. Seems like every couple of weeks we get, um, you know, either videos sent to us or notes sent from customers. Hey, you know, figured out a new way to open a beer with the quill. We've now got like three ways to open a beer bottle with the quill. Um, and, uh, you know, customers have used these for like breaking open pistachios, especially when they aren't fully split in the bag. You know, just work that in there and twist, pop it off. Um, I've used mine as a shrimp peeler, uh, and uh, if I'm doing, like, cleaning pots and pans that got a lot of grime on them, this, you know, diamond cross-section, the edges of that work great as a scraper on stainless steel on stainless steel. Um, you can use it as an awl, uh, so you can uh, twist and actually drill using that pyramidal tip to remove material, um, drill holes and things like uh, if you got, a, you know, a cock gun and you've got, you know, the cartridge, um, you know, some of those tips are really hard to cut through. You can use that to drill through the tip, make an opening, and you're ready to go. Um, we also use this to lever open that chisel tip edge, lever open like frozen Tupperware. It's like ancient remains of leftovers. You have no idea what's in there, and you can't pull them open with your fingers. Well, this thing pops in there, and you got that lever arm, and you just twist open that plastic. Um, and I've used it in hammer grip to uh, split blocks of ice just to see, hey, does it work as an ice pick? Yes, it does. 
Um, so these are really wonderful tools. Um, if you ding up the edge, when I say the edge, the uh, pyramidal tip, you know, especially if you're drilling through some things like, um, you know, some bottle caps out there, you know, it'll drill through those no problem, that sort of thing. But some of them get a little tougher. You, you might mar the tip or the edge using your quill, especially against like metal on metal. Well, it touches up really quick because it's 303 stainless steel. It's not, uh, you know, Rockwell 60 tool steel. Um, so you can use a hand file or even sandpaper on a wooden block and reestablish that tip uh, very rapidly. So it's, it's really quite a clever, abusive tool. I'm trying to think of other use cases I have left off. Oh, all right. How you carry the quill. I talked about the coin pocket. Um, my wife keeps her slim quill in her purse. Um, and when she goes walking in our neighborhood, we got dogs that are loose, other people's dogs, not ours. Some of them... You know, you don't really know how good of a dog they are, and they're suddenly on you. And so she keeps the quill in her hand just like this on her walk around the neighborhood, no problem, ready to go. Um, so it's really light and simple, and you can manipulate objects like your smartphone or other complex objects with this in your hand in this grip or um, in this grip. Your fingers are locked in. It's very easy to manipulate things, you know, if you're doing uh, utility tool-type tasks, that sort of thing. Uh, but in self-defense, uh, this is a defensive tool. Um, I prefer this grip. I call this the jab. Um, so I have my middle and ring finger locked into the hook gap. Um, I have the tapered spike coming out. If I'm in a situation where I don't want to show that I have it, I can conceal the tip of the quill with my index finger. And then if I do have to jab with it, I can drop that finger and do a quick poke. Um, and you can also turn it into haymaker grip, which you can use for chin jab type motions or literally throwing a haymaker for a lot of power uh, to punch through thicker material such as the side of a human head. Um, ice pick or hammer grip works as well. Uh, these grips all work as defensive purposes. When you look at this, this is my tasteful bedside uh, table. What do you call this thing? It holds your car keys and phone, that sort of thing. It's a bowl shaped like a, a human skull, so tasteful. Uh, so I have this by my bed, but um, it's reasonably anatomically correct enough for this demonstration. So, you know, when you use the quill, it's a piece of metal in your fist. It's a spike for your fist. Uh, for self-defense, um, it's very difficult to disarm because you have the hook side in your grip. You have all the leverage to keep this in your hand. And the opponent only has a tapered spike that's hurting them um, to grip with, and that's not a very good situation for them. Um, in self-defense, you can use this for rakes and stabs and gouges to you know, the hand or the forearm or the soft parts of the body, um, but it especially shines when you talk about the human head. So the skull covered with uh, thin layers of skin, muscle, cartilage, uh, you can hook into the skull structure to push somebody off you, a get off me tool. So hooking in the orbital socket or nasal cavity or top of the jaw or bottom of the jaw, you can use that pyramidal tip. It's similar to a bodkin point, like a medieval uh, armor piercing arrow. And it will easily poke through the skin, the flesh, the cartilage, and you can push off uh, to push an opponent off of you. Um, so the quill really does have a lot of capability. Um, it's very handy, pairs very well with a folding pocket knife. Um, I forgot to bring out the quill trainers for this video because we're amateur hour and we do everything in one take, but we do have plastic quill trainers. Um, yeah, we'll see, maybe she can run and get them, but we'll talk about those in a sec. Um, but yeah, it's a very intuitive uh, weapon to use, a spike for your fist. Um, you know, it's just got a lot of multi-grip options. Um, and, yeah, it's just really versatile. Um, just a wonderful thing. And the best part of it, my wife designed this thing. I would have never come up with this on my own. She wanted to give uh, women a self-defense option that they could wear on them, even tuck behind the ear. Uh, and that's how it all started. That's why the quill is in this shape. Um, and it just so happened as we uh, iterated on the design, uh, it just had so much more beyond 
you know, just a, a metal spike you could hook behind your ear. Okay, here we go. Thank you. So these are the quill trainers. Right now we have them sized to match uh, the original quills. We haven't come out with trainers yet for the Slim Quills and the Quill XLs because, well, uh, the original Quills have been selling like gangbusters, and when we launched with the trainers, these two sizes weren't available. So the Blue Quill Trainer is 3D printed, um, and it is solid plastic, um, and it is rather firm. So you would use this against, say, a body opponent bag um, to not damage, uh, you know, some target that you were practicing strikes with. Uh, the red quill is 3D printed from a material called Ninja Flex. It's kind of like um, if the quill and a Twizzler had a baby. Uh, it's actually got 3D printed cavities on the inside of this, so this will collapse. So if you're training with an opponent, um, you know, obviously you have to use safety because you are punching them with a fist, but it doesn't have it, the rigidity of the blue quill trainer. Uh, we got these 3D printed by uh, G3D Printables, also in Pennsylvania. It was a really handy solution. So we do sell the original quill and trainers on our site. And maybe next year we'll have trainers for the other sizes of quills. Am I leaving off anything? Probably. We probably are leaving stuff off because it's amateur hour. How many minutes are we in? Is it painfully like over 20? 16 minutes. Ooh. I thought it felt longer. That's a bad sign. All right, so the scalping story. Six years ago, we did not have the cats that we have now. Um, we had a big white fluffy cat named Bacardi, and we had um, an orange tabby called Jack. My wife named these when she turned shortly after 21, so Jack and Bacardi, you get it. Um, so Jack um, was an orange tabby. He was fat. He also had, uh, what is the name they use for this? Is it called the primordial pouch? So that is a form of cat body armor. They, they have extra uh, flabbiness on their belly because when cats fight, they kind of try to wrap each other up and kick each other in the belly, tear their bellies open. Um, so not only was he fat, he had this primordial pouch that sagged off of him. It was kind of like cow udders. And when he would run, uh, the sag would jostle back and forth. It was hilarious. So uh, he never really liked me. I didn't like him. I'd make fun of him. You know, whenever it was time to feed him, I'd make like a pig sound like, Nyee! you know, because he was fat and his utter thing would jiggle around. But anyway, um, so this was six years ago. It was, it was summer. It was a hot summer. And we were hosting my, par my uh, wife's parents, so the in-laws, and it was several days into the visit. And they drive like 18-hour drive to get to our house. So when they visit, they're there like at least eight, nine days. And if you ever ha or live in a small house and host people, uh, sanity breaks on day three. So to conserve my sanity, I would uh, sleep in while they were there or pretend to sleep in for as long as possible. Um, before I had to go out and be social. Um, nothing against them. They're wonderful people. It's just, hey, when you have company over that long, that's what you got to do. Uh, and so this one summer morning, I was successfully sleeping in, which is a very rare thing. I'm usually an early bird, but I was uh, deep in sleep. Now, what our cats had figured out, they, they tried to get us uh, to feed them as early in the morning as possible. And they were learning that if they have a big cat fight, a monstrously loud brawl, hissing and clawing, just tornado of fur and teeth, uh, they could get us to feed them early. So they started just having these, like, brawls in the morning. And eventually it got to where it would be before 5 o'clock in the morning when they were doing these brawls. It was horrible. But on this particular morning, it was a Saturday morning. What time do you think it was? Like, it was after 6 it was after six, so my wife is up. She's awoken to this brawl. Somehow it didn't wake me up. She goes to the restroom, and the cats are still brawling, so she seeks to separate them. And they're, they're fighting in the restroom that she's walking into, so she pushes one of them, Bacardi, into the restroom further. Then she grabs Jack and tosses him out the restroom and slams the door shut to separate them. And she slammed the door on Jack's tail, so... You know, imagine the height of a cat's tail. Uh, it was about that much of its tail caught in the door, and Jack made some noise. I was not a witness for this, but he ran. 
and part of his tail stayed. Uh, he did not cut off his tail. He just, uh, well, the wife, by closing the door on his tail, uh, wound up scalping the tail. So the, the tail sheath of, of tail skin scalp, about that much of it, was caught in the door, and then it, he ran away, and it fell to the ground. And my wife was understandably horrified. Um, so she rushes out. I'm still asleep. Okay, I'm peacefully asleep. I'm trying to sleep in as long as possible. Okay, because all I care about is hiding from visitors at our house. And Jack is, is scrambling around the house in pain. He had um, about three inches of like scalped tail, so it was like the bone and the muscles on the tail and red glistening with blood. And he was running around the house, and it was like a little red paintbrush uh, against the walls and the curtains and stuff. He ran upstairs. He ran downstairs. Eventually, my wife was able to corner him in the bedroom where I was still blissfully asleep. And she says, Zach, get the pet carrier. Zach, get the pet carrier. And I wake up. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And he just didn't understand what was going on. This cat was so bad, he was almost impossible to get in a pet carrier when he wasn't you know, with a scalp tail and pain. And somehow I was able to, like, get out of bed and, you know, rush in performance mode, get the pet carrier. We stuff him in there. I, I stuff him in the wife's car. Uh, it was a 2007 Prius. We still have it. still gets 45 miles to the gallon. Yeah. But anyway, I drive to the vets, right? And Jack's, like, he's panting in pain. He's, like, really pissed. And he doesn't like going to the vet anyway. Uh, so I bring him to the vet. Um, they tell me, well, you know, the door got shot on the tail, the stuff happens, but uh, that bone is broken in the tail, so we're going to amputate that part of the tail up to where the break happens, and we're going to, you know, stitch it shut, and your cat's going to have, like, antibiotics and painkillers and going to have to get coned up. You guys remember the cone of shame from the movie Up? Yep, Jack got a cone. So I was like... You know, I don't really like this cat. I'm like, okay, expensive procedure for cat, whatever. I drive home. I'm like, give me a call when it's done, you know. So in the afternoon, they call me. Oh, it's done. Well, it was a really hot day. It was a lower 90s in Pennsylvania, really hot summer day. And uh, I drive out with a pet carrier, you know, pick up Jack. He's in a, like a stupor. He's drooling. He's got the cone of shame on him. He's really out of it. They told me he was really bad back there, so they like, pump them full of drugs right so I put them in the back of the Prius and I'm driving it's like 15 20 minute drive to the house hot summer day and Jack takes a dump in the pet carrier early on in the drive and I'm like I got the AC on circulate you know recirculating the cooler air from the hotter air outside and suddenly I was trapped in uh, olfactory hell it's like having the steamy dump right in front of your face so it's horrible and I was like oh, oh and I rolled down the windows to blow in fresh air and if you've ever been inside a Prius and try to roll down the windows what really happens is the air just recirculates and it was 90 something degree hot poo air circulating all over me oh man it was like it felt like it was like getting into your skin and I was going I was crying out I was like ah oh, you know I was driving and I just felt uh, so bad uh, for myself. I got home. Uh, I took Jack, pet carrier. I dumped Jack outside. I left the, uh, oh, I didn't dump him outside. I dumped him in the house. I then dumped the pet carrier with the feces in it outside for my mother-in-law to clean up later. Oh, that was a terrible day for me. Um, anyway, that was a scalping story. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're one of the 12 pe special people that stayed to the end, please consider sharing this video so 13 will have watched it. And remember, be edgy. And Valentine's Day is going to happen, right, fellas? If you want a tomahawk, buy your wife a quill. Tell her it's jewelry. Buy two quills. Look at that. It's a heart. Show you're a sensitive man when you buy a tomahawk. Be edgy.